Hi friends, Ashley here. Welcome to Wine Talk Wednesday. And on today's episode, we're gonna be keeping it a little bit more light and just honestly chatting about some real life stuff, but funny real life stuff, because my last two have been a little more reflective, which is not a bad thing. Believe me, I'm pretty self-reflective. I've got the journals upon journals upon journals to prove it, so. Anyway, today I'm drinking a red blend. Um, I honestly don't remember the name of it. Hey, babe! Adam! Hold, please. I should just text him. When you live in a house and our don't have the... We used to just be able to yell at each other and we didn't have rooms in our studio apartment and now here, I feel like 99% of our marriage is just yelling, what? From different rooms. So, can you grab that bottle of wine? Because I am not prepared for this video. Let's see if he gets it. I just sent it to him. Here he comes. I hear him. When I was Facebooking, it was intense. It's okay. Here. Thank you. You're, you're the best. Oh, you're welcome. You still eating your cookie like a bag of chips? Yeah. Oh, see you later. Look at the snow. It's, it's snowing. snowing. It's so beautiful out. You make snow angels? No. I want to stay inside and stay warm. Want to make snow Ashleys? Because you're my angel. Oh, you're cute. 11 years in, I know. I know. Mm hmm. All right. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Actually, I'm not sorry for any of those things. Uh, today we are drinking, it's called The Dark 2015 Red Wine by Constantino Cos Cosentino Winery. Um, it states, and I will, I shall read. Our boldest, most intense wine is the color of ink with layers of lush flavors of blackberry, currant, plum, and just a touch of chocolate. Don't be afraid of the dark. The dark. Actually, it's not bad. Adam just opened it because he's a sweet boy. Okay, so let's let's just pop into it. Wine, number one, I like it. People ask me, why, when did you start drinking red? Um, when I worked in a restaurant and I had to, because in order to work in this restaurant, I had to be able to sell really good red wine. And granted, I wasn't a sommelier or anything crazy like that, but I began growing my appreciation for wine working at this restaurant uh, in downtown Omaha. I then went to um, the GM at the time, took me to a, a glassware class that essentially had you, sorry, I'm burpy today, I don't know why. Little indigestion. Uh, it essentially had us drinking out of different glassware, like wine glassware, and it, you could essentially take the same wine, drink it out of a different glass, and it would taste, it would change the taste and the profile of the wine. It was very interesting. So I really began to dive into it then. And then, quite frankly, I just really began to love it. Um, I, I went from drinking Pinots to, you know, blends to Malbecs to, uh, you know, the really, like the Merlots, the Cabs, like I basically tell people, I like wine to leave a sweater on my teeth. Like if, if that thing is leaving a sweater on my teeth, meaning it's really dry and I get wine, really bad wine teeth, it's it's a good wine, typically. I do like whites. Uh, I don't drink them a lot. I usually will drink a white during the, during the summertime, like on the patio, and that's like a Sauvignon Blanc. Maybe a Chardonnay if it's nice and buttery. Like the buttery, the better. It's the business. Beets, bears, beets. Battlestar Galactica. Anyway, so that's just a quick take on wine. Also, you will never find me opening a bottle of wine with one of those darn electric wine openers or what are they called, rabbits, the little rabbit things. I go over to people's houses and I, yeah, I do, I judge, I judge all of you when I go and somebody pulls out one of those electric things or the rabbit, like, oh, we have one of these. I'm like, just get a wine key. They're like two bucks. I keep one in my car. I used to at least. I used to legitimately keep one or two in my car. It was when I served though. That's how I open my wine. I, I can give those to anybody. Like I'll, I'll pull one out and they look at me like, 
what do you want me to do with this? It's like, I want you to open the wine and nobody knows how to do it. And so guys, you know what? I just have to tell you something. If, if the world, if you know, the world ends tomorrow, if the economy crashes, how are you going to open your wine? If your electric thing breaks, you're not, you're going to want to learn how to open it up with a normal wine key. So maybe we cover that in another segment. I don't know who you are. I'm going to stop talking about wine though. I'm just going to enjoy drinking it. I had an interesting experience this last week, uh, a situation, would you, would you maybe call it? I've had um, a few things. So let's, I, I wanna talk about something important to my heart and it's called leggings. Ladies, leggings, let's chat about it for a minute. Do you think it's acceptable to put on a pair of leggings? Now I'm not talking about athletic leggings. I'm not talking about Nike, leggings that you put on and that you go where to work out. That's different. I'm talking about cotton or a cotton blend, spandex, cotton polyester, whatever, legging. Is it acceptable to wear those leggings as pants? Here's, I'm going to take it a step further. So I mean your, your shirt, the, the, the hemline of your shirt does not cover your your front area or your or your or your caboose is what i'm saying is that acceptable just tell me just leave it in the just leave it in a comment below just tell me what you think because i think that it is not and here's why nobody wants to see your junk i don't want to see it i i i don't want to see it in the workplace i don't want to see it in the supermarket i don't want to see it when I'm pumping gas and look up and see, you know, whatever you got creeping under there, like good for you, but can you put on a respectable pair of pants? What happened to sweatpants? All right, what happened to jeans? What happened to, I don't know, um, culottes? You know, if you're from Minnesota, wait for it. I had a good laugh and I actually really wanna share this because I think it, I think it was incredibly incredibly insightful and um, it gave me all of the laughs today. Um, but a girlfriend of mine from high school who totally is my type, like my sense of humor, she's now a mother of two. Uh, her name is Lindsay and Lindsay is freaking hilarious. Oh my gosh, did her story go away? Please don't tell me that it did. The definitive ranking of Omaha weathermen. Here, I'm just gonna snapshot all of them because it's freaking hilarious and I'm gonna insert them. So if you're from Omaha, you'll understand this. If you're not from Omaha, you pretty much know that in your, wherever you live, you've got your local weather stations. There's usually like the really good one that you know you're gonna turn on at all times. They're solid. The forecasters and the, um, the anchors are fun and easy to look at or, you know, they're just, they're decently put together. And then you've got the other ones that are a little more like, I'll watch you because you come on at nine and the other one's on at 10 and I'm about ready to fall asleep at night. Um, there's always like the local celebrity type, type getups. Well, so she ranked, she ranked the, our local news um, forecasters on a scale of five to one and why essentially. And so, it kind of just made my day to where uh, her first one was, I'm just gonna read while I, while I caption these. So Jim Flowers, Jim Flowers used to be the man and there was a big to-do in Omaha, uh, if you're familiar with the Omaha, Nebraska area, of um, some shady massage parlors that apparently Jim Flowers went to. One got shot down for, um, shot down, got shut down for having a possible prostitution ring. And Jim Flowers' name got thrown out. He got fired from one of the other stations, went into hiding for a little bit, and then resurfaced and came back with Channel 3. But he's, you know what? His mustache is as strong as ever. He wears this cute little flower on his lapel, and he's kind of legit. And so Lindsay states she used to like him, but she guess he went and did something wrong. Um, and inappropriate and became 100% a creep town, which Lindsay was not in a motel. It was actually in a quote unquote massage parlor. Number five, number four, Sean I Everson. I don't even know who this guy is, which says a lot about it, but apparently she thinks he's fine, but the mole and that tooth, uh, 
I love how she apologizes and states, sorry about the mole, but you know, poor Sean. Number three is actually my personal favorite. It's Rusty Lord, and I think he is just absolutely fantastic. Um, Rusty tells really bad jokes. I remember when he first came on air and I was like, who is this guy? Cause he, I do believe he actually took Jim Flowers' spot. He was like, they had a couple interim guys that didn't really work out and then Rusty Lord hit the scene and it was like, whoa, look out. And he's trying to be hip and young and cool and um, he told horrible jokes. I just appreciate him though. I think he's, I think he's got a great dry sense of humor. <laughs> But Lindsay's response was, excuse me, but there's only one Lord. However, with that last name like that, you should always get the weather spot on and you do not. Good day, sir. Valid, Lindsay. That's that's extremely valid. I, I might agree with you there. Ryan McPike. I think Ryan McPike is channel six. I don't actually know. I don't know where he belongs. It's <laughs> She states, your face, voice, and weather skills do not offend me. You neither calm nor excite me. So she really is feeling a little like, meh, on Ryan McPike. We could go either way, which I think is why he claimed the number two spot. So, and apparently he has an acceptable mole on his face. Good for you, Ryan. Number one, it goes without being said. If you're in the Omaha area, you know, you know why he's number one. This guy rolls up his sleeves and it, it goes down here in this in this town. Uh, I You know, whether you're from another city or not, you, you've got that weatherman that he comes on and it's like, it's all ears because he's the man. He's got the plan. He knows what's gonna happen. Like he can call it like it is. He, he you know, is, is, he's tough and tender, right? He's gonna be tough on the weather, but, but, he's, but he's tender. He's like, like, oh, just, he speaks to your heart. And that's Bill Ramby. So we're gonna roll through why Bill Ramby's the man. Well, he's got those rosy cheeks. He's got some kind eyes. He does, those eyes are just kind. And you can't see him in the photo, but those slender arms and fingers for accurate pointing. Absolutely, absolutely. And a head full of weather knowledge, which couldn't be more true, Lindsay. Couldn't be more true. Clearly, Bill Ramby is the winner. She did give an honorable mention to number zero. I don't even know if she'd call this an honorable mention, but uh, Stephanie Ryan, she's neither from Nebraska nor a weatherman, but she used to be a reporter for Channel 2 Baton Rouge, and she could probably become a weather authority if she wanted to with twice the class and triple the sass. But that was Lindsay B, uh, who I'm giving all the credit, all the uh, creative credit to on this. It was too good not to share though. I woke up this morning and I was flipping through Instagram and I saw that and I was laughing out loud in bed uh, with Adam because it just gave me all of the laughter. And her response to me was, I actually DM'd her. I said, this just made my life. And she was like, you're right. If only I could make millions of dollars making stupid internet shit. <laughs> know anyone who's hiring. You know what's funny, Lindsay? The world is your oyster. You could actually make millions of dollars if you knew how to get that out there. So, you know, you make this stuff go viral. If you wanna go follow Lindsay, I'll put her, twi I'll tw her Twitter handle. I'll put her Instagram handle below. She's really funny, mother of two. She's a good mom. I actually haven't seen her since I think graduation, but she, she speaks to my soul. So anyway. All right, my friends, that wraps up another Wine Talk Wednesday. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like this video, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. We would absolutely appreciate it. On top of that, I hope you're enjoying some wine while you're watching this. And if you're not, that's okay too, because I'm doing it for you. We'll see you next week.